A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus said to the Pharisees, Once there was a rich man who dressed in purple and linen and feasted splendidly every day. At his gate lay a beggar named Lazarus, who was covered with sores. Lazarus longed to eat the scraps that fell from the rich man's table. The dogs even came and licked his sores. Eventually, the beggar died. He was carried by angels to the bosom of Abraham. The rich man likewise died and was buried. From the abode of the dead where he was in torment, he raised his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus resting in his bosom. He called out, Father Abraham, have pity on me. Sent Lazarus to dip the tip of his finger in water to refresh my tongue, for I am tortured in these flames. My child, replied Abraham, remember that you were well off in your lifetime while Lazarus was in misery. Now he has found consolation here but you have found torment. And this is not all. Between you and us, there is a fix, a great abyss, so that those who might wish to cross from here to you cannot do so, nor can anyone cross from your side to us. Father, I ask you then, the rich man said, Send him to my father's house, where I have five brothers. Let him be a warning to them, so that they may not end in this place of torment. Abraham answered, They have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear them. No, Father Abraham, replied the rich man, but if someone would only go to them from the dead, then they would repent. Abraham said to him, If they do not listen to Moses and the prophets, they will not be convinced even if one should rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Let us all be seated. During the Lenten season, Holy Mother the Church, through the words of Christ, has been reminding us the importance of repentance. And we have described repentance as the way by which we develop humility. It is not we who develop humility, it is we who repent. And when Christ sees that we are repenting, then he gives us the virtue of humility. And the sure sign of humility is the fear of God. The fear that you might be disobeying a command of God, a command of Jesus Christ, a fear 
that probably you do not know certain commands of Christ and might be disobeying them and therefore you will not go to heaven. This is our goal that we receive this gift. You cannot develop this. You cannot sit down and say, Fear God, fear God, fear God. The fear of God is a gift of the Holy Spirit. Unless the Holy Spirit give it to you, you cannot have the fear of God. And Christ himself says, Fear God who can destroy both your body and your soul. Do not fear man. He can only destroy your body, but not your soul. All the more, do not fear small things like germs and viruses. They can just make your body sick. It can kill your bodies, but it cannot kill your soul. And so what is most important for us is to make sure we have that fear of God because that is the most reliable sign that you're humble. Now, further signs that you're humble and that you have the fear of God, further signs, because we want to know if we have them. Saint Benedict says, obedience to the holy rule. That's a sign. Superiors cannot know if you have humility. Superiors cannot see if you have the fear of God. But they can see if you are obedient. Another sign that superiors can see is if you love silence. So there are ways by which we can know if you have humility and the fear of God. So in today's gospel, we have two examples. A rich man who did not have the fear of God and did not have humility and a poor man, Lazarus, who had humility and who had the fear of God. And as the Gospel shows us, Lazarus was in the bosom of Abraham, which is a way of saying, he is in heaven. And the rich man was in hell. Which clearly shows us that humility and the fear of God brings us to heaven, while the lack of humility and the lack of the fear of God will surely bring us to hell. Now, can we see signs that one is destined to hell, like the rich man? Yes. Just like superiors can know if you're humble and you have the fear of God by seeing if you are obedient in a lover of silence. You can see, you can detect, you can know 
outwardly. Now let's look at the rich man. Can we see that he did not have the fear of God? He did not have humility and was going straight to hell when he died. Yes, three signs. First, he was enjoying eating every day. Secondly, he was dressed very well. And third, he was looking down with contempt on Lazarus the beggar who was at his doorstep. So he could look at Lazarus with contempt because Lazarus was at his doorstep. If Lazarus was not at his doorstep, probably he would not look down with contempt on him. So those are the three signs. In the world, everybody has these three signs. They are always in a party. As St. Thomas of Aquinas said, constantly attending parties and enjoying parties. And there are pictures of them in a party. And they are also dressed very well. Well, those two things go together. When you go to a party to eat well, you dress well. And why do you dress well when you eat? Do you have to dress well to eat? No. But you dress well because you want to be seen. Do you remember that was the thing Christ condemned in the Pharisee? They want to be seen. They pray in a manner that they can be seen praying. They want to take the first place in the party because they want to be seen. Those are the first two signs. They enjoy eating in parties and they enjoy wearing nice clothing. Did you notice that was the description of the rich man in the gospel? Now look at Lazarus the beggar. He had nothing to eat and he had no nice clothing. And the gospel even says his clothing were sores on his skin. That was his clothing. Now, is there anything wrong with eating nice food? which the rich man was doing? Nothing. Is there something wrong in wearing nice clothes? Nothing. But to wear nice clothes in order to be seen, to attend parties in order to be seen, is like the Pharisee. It's a sign of pride. It is what Christ condemned in the Pharisee. That when they pray and they do good works and they attend parties and banquets, they want to be seen in the first places. That 
is a sign of pride. Which, if you notice, the Lazarus, Lazarus the beggar, did not have. She could not decide to be seen eating nothing or without nice clothes. He did not want to be seen by skins full of sores. So he was doing nothing to be seen. But the real sin of the rich man is that his pride was shown externally. Because you cannot see pride. It's a spiritual defect, a spiritual sin. But now in the gospel, you can see the pride of the rich man coming out. You can see it. That's why in the gospel. So you can see that he was proud. So you can also see if you are proud. And what is this that can be seen? The rich man in his pride looked down with contempt at Lazarus the beggar. What does it mean to look with contempt? To look with contempt is to look down as if the beggar is doing something wrong. You look down at the beggar and say, What's wrong with him? He's so dirty. He's so ugly. He's so smelly. Criticizing something that the beggar was not at fault with. That's contempt. You criticize something that is not wrong. And so usually people who are proud, who do not have the fear of God, they hold parties, they wear nice clothing to be seen, and then watch what they talk about. That is the sign that they are proud and without the fear of God and therefore are going straight to hell. They look at contempt at other people. They talk about other people and criticize what they do, even criticizing the good which other people are doing. Like the rich man, he was looking with contempt at the poverty of Lazarus. And yet, it was the poverty of Lazarus that saved him. And so these proud people holding parties in nice clothing, they look down and criticize at the things other people are doing, especially things others are doing to save their souls. That is the very sure sign of pride, the absence of the fear of God, which is the gift of the Holy Spirit. So there you have the gospel for today, why we are in the monastery, we would like to be like Lazarus. Today, 
There are things going on in the world that's getting worse. There is what you call, as you have known, the coronavirus. It's just a small virus that causes coughing and, and colds like some of you have right now. It's just a little virus. But it is an epidemic. And it's killing so many people. So much so that today, schools had been closed. There are no classes going on. So imagine all these kids paying their tuition fee, going to school, and suddenly all the schools are closed. Stores are closed. People are forbidden to go out of their homes. And in Rome, the seat of the Vatican, no masses are being celebrated. No masses, no sacraments, no confession, no extreme action. Crowds are being discouraged. In fact, our party tomorrow has been canceled for fear of this virus. There are lockdowns. What are lockdowns? People are not allowed to go out or travel. Groceries are beginning to be empty of food. Everything is so bad because people are full of fear because these germs, this virus, can hit anybody, anytime, anywhere, and it can kill them immediately. <clears throat> Matter of days. It can kill you faster than cancer. And people are afraid to the point that a party tomorrow is canceled because they are afraid to attend parties. Are we supposed to be afraid of a small virus? The whole room, there are no masses. See here, we have one going on because Christ says, be afraid of God, not of men, not of viruses. And for you to be afraid of a virus is even a sin because it is a disobedience to the command of Christ. So what are we supposed to be afraid of? that if this virus hits one of us, we could only have days to live. And what we should be afraid of is, we might still do not have the signs of humility and the sign of the fear of God. That is what we should fear, that we have not yet repented. And Christ says, that is a very good kind of fear because it comes from the Holy Spirit. But the virus the germs, well, take precautions, but don't fear it. Fear the fact that you have not yet finished your repentance, and therefore if you suddenly die, you would be together 
with the rich man of the gospel instead of with Lazarus in heaven. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.